Hello, and welcome to another amplifier repair video. I don't know if I'd really call this a very repair video or not, but uh, my name is Todd, Ellsberg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Central Washington for you. Um, today I have obviously a Tar Amps DS1200x4 on the bench, and got the microscope rolling here with the board on it, and of course the picture in the corner here for you. And you're probably wondering, well, what are we what are we doing today? Well, today is just going to be a little bit of a ramble about previous repairs. So this amplifier came in with a non-functional single channel, which is real common on these multi-channel amplifiers that run the 2093 IC here. Uh, that IC right there. So it came in with a... Uh, failed channel which is the one where i have course right behind the microscope here um, i have the transistor out of it and i have a 330 ohm well let me back up originally i did not show any shorts across the gate source of any of the transistors odd right yeah but yet i had a failed transistor um, when i pulled the transistor out i didn't have any shorts so then what I did is I, I put a new transistor in. Here you go. I put a new transistor in, brand new. Uh, th these use the uh, IRFB 5620s. I put a brand new transistor in, fired it up because I didn't see any shorts. And then sure enough, shorted out my transistor. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should have checked the gate drive uh, before putting in a new transistor but I didn't show any shorts or any odd resistance values. You know me, guys, I go by resistance. So um, so then I knew right off the bat that I had a drive problem because as soon as I powered it up and it didn't work, obviously, I mean, it didn't go into protect or anything. It, it, it came on, but that channel still didn't work. And it shorted out my transistor, pulled the transistor, and then I had a 330 ohm short across the gate and source. I'm like, oh, that's odd. Where'd that come from? Because it wasn't there before. Well, that's where this microscope picture is coming in. You can see on that microscope picture, I literally fired up the hot air, went to pull the IC off. I was there for a uh, half a second, the IC came off. And I knew that that was not right. So see how clean this center pad is? Well, that's because the IC was not soldered to the center pad. So these 2093s have a really big heat sink on the back. Hmm. Heat sink on the back of the IC gets soldered to the board. This is a class D driver IC. This directly drives the transistors of this amplifier. If this is not soldered correctly, your amplifier is going to fail. And as this I see, you can see there is no solder on the back of that. It is bone dry. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, medevac overhead. <laughs> um, I live right by a hospital. Uh, so, yeah, nothing. And to top it off, I'm sorry, I can't get close enough, but Every single one, almost every single one of those solder joints for the individual pins are all dry. Like there, there is very few solid good connections on this IC. So bottom line is they did not use, well, I can't say they didn't use, well, either they didn't have the right equipment to do the job or they weren't hot enough uh they didn't use uh, solder paste i don't know i don't know what they did you can see they soldered it on and they had an issue here in the protection circuit i think this is uh, protection and input to a channel uh, i'm not sure i'd have to look at the print um but you can see where they soldered this on and they had to go through and touch up these legs here which probably because the amplifier was going in to protect 
Well, they've managed to resolve the protection issue, but they left so many dry solder joints that it was just a matter of time that you would lose a connection here and it'll pop an output transistor. Then the transistor shorts uh, gate to source and that source voltage goes right back through the gate. Of course, the transistor is shorted and then comes right up and then cooks your IC. There's nothing in between. Oh, there's a, I, I digress. There's a 10 ohm, I think it's a 10 ohm resistor. I'd have to double check. 10 ohm resistor here right at the gate. Um, but unless it directly shorts that IC out to a point to draw enough current through an 0805 resistor, yeah, you're, you're going to lose the, I, you're, you're going to lose the IC first before you open that resistor up. Um, but that's what I wanted to show us guys. You got to use enough heat. You got to use the right equipment. You got to use the right stuff to make sure that these amplifiers stay functional for, you know, a, a good amount of time. I don't know when this was repaired. Um, the data manufacturer was one of 23 and this was repaired on two of 23. Uh, by somebody it wasn't by me um but yeah that's how they left it and that's why it failed dry ice solder joints so that's what i wanted to show you guys today on uh, this time so this ds1200 by 4 uses an irs 2093 which if you're not used to micro soldering smd components the 2093 is a bear to replace so Practice makes perfect. Get yourself some spare boards. Um, solder these on and off until you get it down correctly. These can take, you know, a fairly decent amount of heat uh, before you damage the IC from uh, too much heat. Um, it's just something you got to get used to. So, hello, hello. I just thought I'd add this uh, little bit of information in. Um, I did mention in the video that. Uh, these can be a bear to solder on. And I just wanted to briefly go over how I go about soldering these um, IRS 2093s in. Because I do get questions on methods of uh, micro soldering, SMD soldering. Uh, and it's really hard to explain over text or phone how to do this. But what I do is I pull the old IC off. As you can see, I already have the new IC on. Sorry, guys. I just thought of this um so we pull the old ic off clean off all the solder all that lead free if it's original or they're leaded if someone's already repaired it clean it all off and then what i do is i pre-tin i pre-tin the pad of the ic and i pre-tin all the connections of the ic uh, just just a little bit you can see here i just a little touch of solder is on this ic i mean you put too much on it and this thing's just going to bounce all over on you or another way you can do it is i'll put a little touch of solder in the middle on the board itself and then with all the flux i'll kind of balance the ic on and you'll you'll know when it's hot enough because the ic will actually sit down in place uh, again it goes back to you know knowing your equipment having your air speed at the right setting and all that but that's what i do is i pre-tin pre-tin the connections pre-tin the ground plane a lot of flux set around the board heat her up and the thing will fall right into place and if you pre-tin these legs legs these aren't even legs pre-tin these uh solder pads nine times out of ten you don't have to go back through get this under the microscope and back go back through and reflow these connections uh, most times i can get it to set right down and the thing will fire right back up but that's the easiest way i have found to do it um, again i use the st 862d hot iron station or hot iron <laughs> hot air station you can see right here um, and for this particular ic i have it set um, at 40 percent 40 oh 10 percent air speed <laughs> uh 10 air speed of 425 degrees celsius as i like to say hot and quick 
um, these ICs, but they are pretty resilient. They can take a fair amount of heat, but if you go back over it and hit it again with hot air, chances are you're going to damage the IC. So, um, so yeah, and yeah, that's what I wanted to explain to you guys. And also at the same time, um, I'm not sure if I get comments about people not seeing me grounded or whatnot when I'm handling ICs, um, but which a lot of people don't notice is right underneath me here, I have a ground goes right across. And in my years past when schooling and stuff, I would always just hold on to my ground when I'm doing something, holding on to an IC or whatnot. But yeah, I'm always grounded or I discharge myself. Um, but yeah, there you go, guys. I just wanted to point out an easy way to solder on your 2093s. Uh, thanks, guys. And uh, thanks for watching. Stick around. That's what I want to show you guys. This amplifier is on my bench because of the dry solder joint. Well, thanks, guys. If you got any questions, please leave them down below. Um, please hit that like, subscribe button. I see my channel's growing. I see it grow all the time. Um, I try to put out relevant content to help others. That's my goal. I mean, that's all I'm here for. Um, yeah, I'm just here to help others. So thanks, guys. Uh, got any questions? Leave them down below. And stay safe. Keep your fingers out of the rails. Catch you on the next one.